G'day everybody, Andrew Maher here. Welcome to The Blueprint. The season is over for the Blues, sadly, but when it comes to the start of a new era at the end of it all, we're fortunate enough to have the Carlton CEO, Greg Swan, joining us today to review the year that was and look towards 2013. Remember, if you want to get involved in today's show, you can send in your questions and comments via Twitter, hashtag The Blueprint. Joining me once again is former champion, skipper of the club before we get to the CEO, Mark McClure, and it's... Lovely to have you here. Disappointing way to end the season on Sunday. Thank you, Andy, and uh, good to be here. It's our last show. It is. But uh, last Sunday was a mirror image of the whole season, really. Mm. Just exactly how the season panned out. Started with some promise. A lot of kids in there. They were pretty good. They tried hard. I liked that. Really enjoyed the last sort of six or eight weeks of the year because of that. Uh, but petered out with uh, poor performance at the end. And... Uh, here we go. And it leaves us with a lot to look forward to. And Greg Swan is the CEO of the football club and is the man who's going to be in the middle of a lot of that, Swanee. You just, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, and thanks, Thanks boys. for coming on. Yep. You're just about the man that every Carlton supporter wants to hear about at the moment because you are going to be in the middle of some key decisions that the club's got to make in the next yep. couple of months. Well, obviously the main one's uh, appointing the coach. And so, you know, that process has begun and um, hopefully we can get something resolved yeah, you know, in the next week or two. So. In, yeah. You've got to tell me that you had an idea that you were going to get someone before you sack somebody. Yeah, no, look, we, you've always got an idea. I mean, people... Uh, the board were adamant that we would see rats through to the end and before you know anyone was spoken to or officially approached or anything like that. But, look, there's plenty of people that, um, you know, would know that... You know, and I think Mick especially made it clear that he was pretty keen to coach, and so that was always there bubbling away without... Um, one of the things for us was that there was nobody else in the market as well, mm. so we could just sort of see how the lay of the land was. And until the Gold Coast game, we were still uh, hopeful that we might actually make finals and, you know, where that took us. So we, we didn't have to rush into a decision or rush into talking to anybody, but, you know, that process has happened post... Um, the press conference on Thursday and you know we, we've um, we're into it now and hopefully we can get it resolved. So where are negotiations at? Well they've begun mm. so you know. You're only negotiating to... with one coach? Um, look we have made a call to uh, one other and um, so but look at the moment it's probably there's one more favourite Is than that the Choco other. Williams? No it's not Choco no. What no are you uh, the president spoke to Paul Roos yeah, yeah so yeah. Um, and he uh, he's had a couple of conversations with him so that's that's happening as well and obviously we've made contact with uh, mixed management and those meetings are you know sort of will are happening and uh, will continue to happen. You, you must look you must have been down the track with Mick to some degree because if you if you weren't already down the track you know at least in some sort of informal way right now the the ball's in his totally in his court if you weren't if you didn't have some kind of understanding because suddenly he is the only one left in the picture and he's the one that yeah. you probably want from the outside looking it appears to be the yeah. case so he can dictate terms if that's yeah, the case no, but every, everybody's keen to say that it was a done deal and it wasn't a done deal i mean as i said before we we even in discussions that happened early in the year even when he left his last job i don't think you know he, he had petrol in the tank he wanted to coach yep. again i mean he talks to people that various functions and you know he's probably run into you sellers in the press box you know he he, he no, made it known to anybody he spoke to that i think i've got a bit of petrol in the yeah. tank so we knew that he was keen to keen to still coach and as i said there was no other jobs that we thought that he would uh, be after and so that was you know we had that sort of in the back pocket so um as i said we we gave an undertaking that we wouldn't do anything until we made a decision on rats which obviously happened uh, after the gold coast game or yeah. you know in that week and so now we're into it so let me ask you this. Janet sends in one of our viewers on uh, Twitter. Any plan B if it, Mick's not there? Well, plan B was also obviously to talk to uh, Rusey, and um, But we're always pretty confident that um, we'd get a senior, you know, a senior guy, an experienced premiership coach, which is really the criteria that we're after. I want to ask you about what does the side need? Mm. What yeah. sort of coach does he need? What sort of coach... Well, I've got an idea, but what sort of coach do you think you need? You were telling me off here what you thought it was. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We look. I think. I think that is the thing for us. I mean, it, the experienced coach is, is the main is the main driver. Somebody that can actually take us to the next step. I mean, we had we had had um, growth every year. You know, we we got better every year until Mind this it. year, obviously. Yeah. Um, but to get into that upper echelon, which is where we want to be, we just felt that. Um, we needed somebody who'd been there and done that pretty much and, and that's sort of that's been the main driver of, of I suppose the change. Well look the board 
the board make that decision. The board make two decisions. They appoint the CEO and they appoint the coach or sack either of us. So, you know, um, hopefully, still, <laughs> hopefully there's no press conferences that I don't know about. No but, taps on the no shoulder? No, nah, not yet. But anyway, we'll... Uh, but, you know, that, that's fair enough. So that, that's their role. And... Um, and in that, uh, and getting to that stage, obviously, you know, they consider all the other options and things. So we view the football, and we're watching all the supporters do too, and we look for people who improve during the year. Yeah. I didn't see any senior players improved this year at all. We had to get, we had to get actually uh, belted up and lost all our players to, to to bring in some kids. So that brings us to to the list management and the development of our youth. What what has been going on? Because it's been pretty poor, what I've seen. Yeah, look, I think one of the things that got missed in all the debate was that a lot of our kids who would probably have had a chance when we're up and running. We're injured as well. I mean, you know, Levi Casbolt missed 12 weeks with a knee at the start of the season. Tommy Bell had a stress fracture in his back and missed about the same. Simon White missed a dozen games. Mm. Like So they're the guys that sort of came in late that people said, you know, where have those guys been? Well, when you add them to, you know, the other guys that were injured, um, you know, uh, Lukey Mitchell didn't start playing till about round 14. So all those kids that sort of came in late had injuries and then obviously the senior group you know that's well documented how many blokes were hurt but um, that was one of the reasons that those kids didn't come in but you know fortunately in the end they did and I think from a supporters point of view it was pretty encouraging some of those guys showed Absolutely, no doubt about you know, that. really good signs and so if we can mix them in with the with our tried and true you know even with, as a, as a defence you know when Jamison, Henderson and Do um, Laidler come mm -hmm. back you know, we might have found a couple of other guys. And so, you know, and even at the end, Matthew Watson broke his hand and missed the last three or four weeks. So we just couldn't, you know, couldn't get anything going there for, uh, for those kids as well to come in, you know, and you know yourselves, it's a lot easier to bring in one or two at a time in an established team. Geelong have been world champions at it. They've, you know, they've introduced a whole stack of kids into a pretty good team. And so, um, yeah, the development, yeah, look, it, it's, a, it's a criticism that's been... Uh, leveled at us a fair bit, but you know our list. Our list is actually okay. We, we certainly. I'm not saying it's uh, ready to roll. Or, you know, it's finished. But um, if we could just get them all out there and uh, let them all play, then then we, we you know, we, we'll be better than where we finished. I think. I want to ask you a question, and I, I don't know if you like it, but uh, why in the hell did you sign up Brett, Brett Ratton for two years when you had doubts in your mind prior to the contract? And, and everyone had, did. No, no, no. Oh, well, I, no, I, I dispute that. We didn't have any doubts. What had happened was. Well, I we put, did. Well, yeah, but you went on the, uh, you went making the call. But <laughs> why would you sign for two? Well, when no, you what happened? What you should have signed for one. What no happened? one else was chasing you. No, no, no. Ask the question. No, no, no. So we went, we went uh, right to the end last year. Yeah. We, uh, you know, fair to say he was pretty, you know, he he could argue and he did that it was pretty tough for him to, to have to do what he did. But that was the board's decision. Get to the finals, win a final. We were, we were really competitive. You know, we had that great game over in uh, Perth. Perth had a, quite a few players out, and we just thought that the group had, had gone gone that step ahead again. So the debate about one year versus two was that if we gave him one year, that pretty much meant that whatever went wrong during this season, they'd be all over him mm. like a rash. And, and we thought he'd earn two years. We just thought that the group, as I said, had, had improved and that uh, there was further improvement in it. Now, obviously, that didn't happen this year, and you know I, I don't want to go back over it because no, no, we true. went over it chapter and verse on yeah. Thursday. But... That was the reasoning, and uh, and you know, and I think you know, we, we they, the club would stand by that because that was the decision that was taken. We thought it was a fair one. We thought he'd earned his contract, and um, you know, unfortunately, this year it hasn't it hasn't worked out as, as we planned. It's an expensive miss. Yeah, it is. It is. And look, but it, it is, and that, that's 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 true. But um, if it was your own business, would you do it that way? Um, well, you wouldn't want to, but if you thought that was better for your business, you would, and that was the decision we made. Do you I mean, feel like this administ your administration, it yeah. sticks as administration, now yeah. ties itself to this next decision? This is crucial that this one's got to be right. Yeah, no, no doubt. And I think, um, you know, people have asked that question, you know, do you think you've got it right? And the answer really, without copping out, is that you won't know for another year or two because yeah. th that's, that's what's going to happen. I mean, if we're sitting here this time next year and we're in the same position, then it hasn't worked. Mm. And if we're higher, then it's, um, you know, it, it has worked. So it's, um, yeah, the proof will be in the pudding in the end. But we, we just think that the group itself, uh, you know, Rats coached for five years, and as I said, it was continual improvement all the way through until this year. Mm. And, you know, now I suppose what we're hoping is that that next step can be taken, that we can get 
get up the ladder. It's Travis Cloak. Depending on who you speak to, Tra- yep. the deal's done. Some people tell you, people who you think might know. Now, yeah. I know you're laughing about no, it. No, no, I'm laughing because they're... everything's a done deal. I know, Nick I know. was a and done deal and this was a done deal. It's because a lot of Carlton people probably think you wouldn't have done what you did to rat them. No, unless, no, no, unless but, yeah. what, So, but, Travis... We're, we're um, told he's done by some people. No, he's not. Obviously, he's not. Um, is he more likely or less likely? No, look, I, to What's sort of chance are you playing for I, Carlton? I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, um, he's a Collingwood player. They hold the aces. Uh, I've re-signed what, everybody, just about everybody. Yeah, else. no, they have, and obviously they've said that his is his is on hold until yep. the end of the year. Yep. So which um, gives everybody else half a chance. Yeah. Well, then, so we're just like anybody else that might be in the mix. We're waiting. Um, if he says he wants to leave, then you know we think we'd uh, we'd be in the hunt. But obviously, if they offer him what he wants and he stays, well then. Yeah, that's where it is. But there's no done deal, absolutely okay, not. Okay, it's not a done deal. But have you spoken to his people about the sort of terms that the club could offer him if he decided to come? Has it um, got to that stage? No, it hasn't, and it hasn't. Because we're, in the, we're of the view that until he says he wants to go, um, you know, we've expressed an interest. Yep. And you know, if he wants to go, we're happy to have those discussions. But we're not getting too caught up in what may or may not happen until he says he wants to go. Because it, it affects everything else as well. We, we've kept looking at other options as well because if we don't get him we don't want to put all our eggs in one basket yep, yep. we want to look at some other options and so so that's what we're doing and so at the moment all the balls are in the air yep. and um and a little bit will be determined as well by who the new coach is and who he likes and doesn't like and who the people are that he might be interested in as well so there's a little bit to play out but you know we've still got like there's a month of finals to go the trade period doesn't begin until early october so we've got there's time for yep. that to happen you know let me ask you, why aren't we a 50,000-member club? Mm. Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, I get asked that a lot, and I ask myself that a lot, and I ask the staff, uh, my staff a lot. Um, well, what are we doing about it? Well, we, we, we've done a lot of things. I mean, even this show, we've sort of tried yep. to get in contact with the members. I suppose it depends what you define as membership, and that's one of the things we're talking about because we've improved our Facebook from about 40,000 followers to 120,000 followers. You know, our Twitter followers are about 30,000. We've got those memberships. So... The people having contact with the club has grown, you know, exponentially. But the actual rusted on, you know, membership ticket holder is... Uh, look, it's improved every year, but it hasn't improved to the level of, um, mm. of, of, you know, some of the other clubs who have actually gone past us, which is, which is a concern. We've actually revamped our websites. We've re- revamped our offerings. So, we, you know, we're really conscious of it. And, uh, and hopefully, um, you know, next year if we get off to a good start, like even last year, we got off to that really good start. Well, sorry, we had a poor pre-season, mm-hmm. which affected the sales, and then we got going. Then we lost a couple, and so ours has been, you know, it fluctuated a little bit on performance. Does, so. does your data and stud- stu- studying of that tell you that if you get a Mick Mouldhouse, the day you make that signing, it equates to an extra 5,000 people jump on board? Well, that, that'll be, look, you know, and in amongst that, you get the letter saying, you know, I'm a Ratton fan and you've sacked him, so I'm not rejoining. So, yeah, you know, yeah. that'll, that'll pan out. I mean, we, we obviously survey all the people, LAPS members. You know, our database is quite, quite extensive. Mm. And, and there's a whole range of reasons that people don't rejoin. And sometimes it's coaches, sometimes it's pricing, sometimes their kids are playing sport on those days. Mm. It depends on a whole lot of things. So, um, you know, that'll be a factor. And hopefully it does help us increase it. But, you know, we're not... You know, you don't do. You do. You make the change on the basis of improving your f- uh, footy team in the mm. in the main. So we got a seven million dollar debt as well. It's down to six and a half. We we paid off seven hundred and fifty thousand last year. We'll pay off another seven hundred and fifty thousand this year. When will it when will be naught? About three years. Three years. Okay. Yeah. That's we've pretty got, ambitious. Uh, yeah. No. Well, we've yeah. got we've got some um, opportunities through gaming and a few other things that are happening at the club that um, you know we, we've spent. We've got everything we need to do in the footy department, so we don't need to find money. Initially, we, our money went into the footy department, but our facilities are first class. Oh, yeah. Our people are, are good. You know, we've got all the. We, we don't lack for anything, so we don't need to put more money into the football department. So anything that we get over and above, uh, you know, our operating costs will go towards debt, and that's something that the board, through their strategic plan, have sort of undertaken to do. So, and th- and that's on track. Will you go to the MCG when this contract finishes at Docklands? We'd like to. Mm. Yeah, it finishes at the end of 2014. I mean, we think we're an MCG club. Yep. Um, we've had some initial discussions with uh, the uh, AFL. So, 
you know, we'll see how that pans out, but we'd like to. In terms of development, just getting back to a question that Sellers asked you before, and it get, does get to spending more money in the footy department, do you think that it's important that we have a, sta- a genuine standalone VFL team? Look, we, pretty, we practically do. Do. We practically do. I mean, we appoint the coaches, we, uh, we control where the players play. Um, you know, they play seven games at Vizzy Park and a couple out at Kramer Street. So for all intents and purposes, that's that's not an issue for us. We we can play our players where we like. We, you know, we provide the physios and the doctors and everything else. It's a pretty much a Carlton club. So, yeah. uh, Swanee, there's a lot to look forward to. One of the things to look forward to is the John Nichols Medal presentation going to be held on Tuesday, the second of October, at the Crown Palladium. Tickets are still available. So, if you're interested in attending, contact the club on one three hundred. Double two seven five eight six. Uh, it's another opportunity yeah. to engage. It's an important night for the footy club. It is, club. and it's actually, uh, and I honestly don't know. It's it, there's no standout this no, year. I mean, normally be... you say it's Murphy or Judd, but uh, it's it's going to be an interesting uh, count this what year. What about it Brock is. McLean? Could he yes. win it with his eight or nine games? <laughs> he he uh, his last sensational period was incredible. Well, and, at the very uh, least, still be a Carlton player next year. He will be. Yeah, I mean we've we've begun discussions there, and that's not conditional. I mean I know it's been reported it's conditional on a, who the coach is, but he, you know, we we think he's uh, been fantastic, and you know the negotiations have begun, and you know we we're confident he'll stay with us. So you have to rubber stamp. Want to. You have to rubber stamp this program, and before yeah. we do say guy goodbye for the last time in 2012. We'd love you to send through your suggestions for the program for next year if the footy club rubber stamp it again and let us go around once more. Send in your tweets via Twitter, hashtag the blueprint or email the club with a blueprint in the subject line at blues at carltonfc.com.au. 2013 is the new horizon for the footy club. We've really enjoyed bringing you the show this year. The club has given us the licence to speak openly and honestly about all the burning issues in the navy blue world. Uh, We, Sellers and I, commend them on that. It's not an easy thing to do. The club's digital gurus tell us that there are some exciting new digital projects in the works for next year, so watch this space. But for now, from Sellers and myself and you, Swanee, um, yeah, well, good luck in the next couple of and weeks. Look, and you've done a great job, boys, and I think uh, we've done the budget, so we're, we'll, <laughs> we'll be going again next well, year, so you, that's you, good. If you've seen the budget, you know that we work pretty cheap. So, <laughs> yeah. well, I don't know about me, about him, but I know I do. <laughs> you do nothing cheap anyway, big fella. We missed a couple of questions we should have got in with. Well, we did, but we haven't got any What's more What's going to happen with it? the board? Um, you'll have to ask Sticks about that. <laughs> What's no, going the board. Sticks? No, no, he's <laughs> fine. He's going well. No, no, no. The board. Uh, there's a uh, three coming off this year, so um, mm-hmm. it's it's being reduced. So okay, mate. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, thanks guys. No Appreciate worries. it. That's Thank it for you. us. We'll see you next season. Bye for now.